it's, it's just three minutes, bro. There is no debate. <coughs> Nicki Minaj is a living legend in rap. She has over 100 million records sold, 23 top 10 Billboard Hot 100 singles, three number one singles, three number one albums, 148 Billboard Hot 1 entries making her the number five of all time, nine American Music Awards, 12 BET Awards, eight MTV Video Music Awards, four Billboard Music Awards, four People's Choice Awards, 10 Grammy nominations. damn bro like oh my god and she's made she's made like obviously with all that stuff she has to have made hits right but bro she's made some like club cult classics bro like some actual jumpers bangers whatever you gonna call them bro like nikki has made some crazy stuff truffle butter um super bass um Anaconda, like, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of great songs. Do I really need made. to keep going? She's made way better songs than I even just long. listened. If Nicki Minaj quietly bowed out of the spotlight, we would all hold her in high regard as one of the most dominant and well-respected female artists of all time. <laughs> but she ruined that. Her continuous self-sabotage, close associations with sexual predators, and patterns of embarrassing behavior has led to even her most diehard fans questioning the rapper's legacy. I said it already, but the stream went down when I said it, bro. Patrick CC, can we have a normal video, please? Patrick CC, you have you have you have talked about killing in your videos. I know you're you're like a like a news kind of channel, you know. You got to talk about that stuff. But can we have a normal wholesome reaction can we talk about how somebody has saved kittens or something like why why always gotta be some death and destruction with you why <laughs> why why can't it ever be something that's like cool calm and collected you feel me why i gotta be something just this just, just like insane every single time <laughs> like bro See, once we dive into her history, you will start to wonder if she is trying to destroy her reputation on purpose, Man. because her words and actions will leave any sane person dumbfounded. But the true beginning of Nicki's decay started in 2017, when one rapper exposed her so badly that the tide began shifting against Minaj. For seven years in a row, 2010 to 2016, Nicki won the BET Award for Best Female Hip Hop Artist. It's almost like seven she was years. the only female rapper. Holy Obviously, she wasn't. Like but seven to years, fans, it kind of bro. Seven years, in seven years, a kid can like learn how to walk, talk, run, and learn how to do like lower level math. Like, you can learn how to read. Like, learn how to write. Learn how to sing. Learn how to play the guitar could do all that in seven years seven years is a long time bro seven years somebody could start a family in seven years a business could be up and running and fully successful and probably put in three different freaking states that yo seven years I felt like that now sure over Jeez. the years she had some beef with other female artists like lil kim mariah carey iggy azalea and even miley cyrus and now Back this to was stupid. This was so stupid. This, I saw this. They had a lot to say about me the other day in the press. Miley, what's good? But none of these feuds so had any stupid, real bro. negative Black impact energy, on Nikki's bro. career, <laughs> especially when you compare them to Black Ma, bullshit. who was the first rapper to successfully <laughs> break down Nicki Minaj. Can somebody coin that? Somebody when put Remy a trademark by that? When incarcerated in 2007, she left behind massive shoes in the female rap scene that Nikki arguably filled. Minaj cemented her name in rap history throughout the next couple of years, being dubbed the Queen of Rap, among other illustrious titles when I mean, you can't you can't be mad at nikki for that if you go away for a long time and somebody takes your spot that's like if lebron left the league when he like first got drafted came back and was like yo i'm not the goat anymore duh nigga you left <laughs> remy was released from prison in 2014 the female rap scene had changed drastically and she was nowhere near as relevant in the eyes of music listeners but remy still gave minaj her props what i can say is that she's a wonderful woman and she's she's on the same page with me like that there's no need to try to tear somebody down i i can say what i said you know i let her know that i'm super proud of her despite her being cordial yeah, like two Red legends cannot coexist agreed to take back the queen of hip-hop crown J. Cole and said what's it a best. better way to show that she is a more skilled rapper than nikki Sometimes than I can't, her songs I'll she released freestyles to what the fuck? only and truffle butter on truffle butter many suspected okay. she took subliminal shots at nikki people keep saying rem you need to drop a record i'm like in a minute let me body 
his records. Yeah, for the millions, I will kill these pop hoes. Even though it seemed like a feud might be brewing, Remy continued voicing her support for Nikki and vice versa. With Nikki hinting at a potential collaboration in the future, Remy continued releasing music seemingly oh filled with subliminal goodness. disses towards Nikki for two. Nah, ain't gonna lie, ain't gonna lie. This one is crazy. This one, if you know about the look him situation with Nikki, this one is crazy. <laughs> You know, I don't know about all that. Debate. On Jason Derulo's single, Swala, Nikki said, I gave these b****s two years. Now your time's up. Bless her heart, she's throwing shots, but every line sucks. Two days later, Nikki was featured on Gucci Mane's <laughs> Make Love, where she took even more shots aimed at Remy. Oh, you the queen of this here? One platinum plaque, album flopped, where this was oh clearly God. aimed at remy who consistently called herself the queen of nyc but remy comes from a class of hip-hop mcs that don't take disses lightly so she clapped back at nikki with a full-fledged cutthroat diss track sheether was remy's 2017 Nas's diss track on jay-z titled ether which is widely regarded as one of the most iconic hip-hop diss tracks of all time set yourself up for fucking failure oh my god why would you do that Oh man, see, bro, what we gotta start doing, at least for rappers, I'm not a rapper, I don't claim to be a rapper, I wanna be a rapper, but I'm not a rapper, you feel me? But for the rappers in the future, bro, stop titling your diss tracks after something that somebody already did, especially if it was top five. If I was gonna make a diss track about somebody, I wouldn't name it Kill Shot 3. I wouldn't name it Rap Devil, whatever. I wouldn't name it something that somebody already named it. That just sets you up for failure. That because now they're gonna con compare your stuff to that. You 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 named it something that was in the top five of diss tracks. You set yourself up to, to fucking fail. It, it, it it's inevitable. <laughs> Like Nas, Remy delivered a barrage of scathing insults and criticisms aimed at Nicki, attacking everything from her appearance to her credibility that as an horrible. artist. She claims that Nicki had sex with Lil Wayne, Drake, <laughs> Trey Songz, Ebro, Gucci Mane. She claims that Nicki's butt implants popped, which led to a downfall in her and Meek Mill's relationship. She also said that Nicki was influencing girls to get BBL surgeries, which have resulted in numerous deaths while under the knife. She claimed that Nicki uses ghostwriters and even hard drugs. She also criticized Nikki about her support for her brother, who is a convicted pedophile. At this point in her Man, career, bro. Nikki seemed invincible, and she had never been directly attacked at this magnitude by another female rapper. People Man, patiently bro. awaited to hear Nikki's response, with many thinking it would be one of the greatest diss tracks of all time, but she choked and barely responded. Trying to act unimpressed by the response, Nikki took to Instagram and posted a now deleted screenshot of an article referencing. <sighs> It wasn't even that good. I, I know. I heard it. That shit was ass. <laughs> but y'all, it's like, it's like, bro, it's like the thing when um Jinxie said, I don't even want to get them. I don't even want to say their names. I don't even want to get them clout, bro. It, at that point, don't say it. At that point, just don't even like bring them up. Just ignore them. Honestly, just keep doing you. Because once you say something, depending on what you say, it could, it could put you in a really, really bad situation really really bad light and you don't want that you don't need that especially if you're at the pinnacle of your career you don't need some bullshit like that tagging around you you feel me so uh, man, it's better to not say anything at all it's better, so much Remy better Nas album opening week sales which is the stereotypical response for a more popular rapper to brag about sales numbers while avoiding the serious accusations she also posted audio of beyonce referencing her as a rap queen I met this girl named Nikki, I guess you could say she was the rap queen. Remy then appeared on the Wendy Williams show where she discussed why she dissed Nikki in the first place. She dressed in all black, implying that her outfit was funeral attire for Nikki. It took Minaj two weeks to respond with a record called No Frauds, where she accused Remy of getting plastic surgery, using ghostwriters, and a plethora of the exact same things that Remy accused Nikki of doing. Her response was basically, I know you are, but what am I? Despite Nikki's cult-like fanbase supporting her, the industry essentially declared Remy the winner, as she dethroned Nikki seven-year run as the best female hip-hop artist at the 2017 BET Awards. Y'all got fat while we starved. Shots in your pads in your bras. Y'all some liars. It ain't no facts in your song. And yeah, that crown is coming back to the Bronx. 
Nicki Minaj hasn't won this award ever since. Those who saw Minaj as the epitome of female rap just witnessed her get embarrassed and disrespected. She failed to address the onslaught of Remy's attacks and just continued to flex her wealth and sales numbers. I was just gonna say, she's still up though. <laughs> it don't matter how much you take down Nicki Minaj, she's still up. She's still up regardless. She can give a damn what the fuck you talking about. She's still up. She's still, <laughs> look at her bro. <laughs> how can you beat something that's doing that? If if bro, she she literally can say I'm going band for band with you right now, and she would win, and I I just sit there like damn, she got it, gang. I'm broke. <laughs> she just flexed nine million on me. I barely can afford a Chick Fil A sandwich. <laughs> She got it, bro. <laughs> Many thought because Nikki avoided the allegations, they must be true. But it's possible that this beef was just strictly entertainment, and Nikki tucked her tail and took the L because she knew she was the weaker MC. Plus, any attention Nikki gave Remy only made her more relevant. But things yeah. got even worse for Nikki. There was a new That's the worst thing about rapper it. from New York called Cardi B, and she had no intentions on bowing down to Minaj. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Under From the moment she stepped into the spotlight, Cardi aligned herself with Lil' Kim and Remy Ma, Nikki's biggest enemies. Remy even brought out Cardi at Summer Jam 2017 where oh, Remy's crazy. whole performance was dedicated to dissing Nicki Minaj. Therefore, Nicki declared Cardi her enemy. But Cardi was different than Remy. She actually had a chance to dethrone Nicki's spotlight and maybe even compete with her sales numbers. Cardi had the same appeal as Nicki. She could rap, she had the charisma and humor, she could do pop music, she had the sex appeal, and she was even supporting a Similar I knew it was going to come in there at some point. During summer of 2017, Cardi <laughs> dropped her song Bodak Yellow, which was the Jesus. hottest record of the summer. Jesus! The spotlight Crazy! Was Cardi, so Nicki immediately took shots at the rapper. London on the track released a song titled No Flag, where Nicki is heard rapping, I heard these labels are trying to make another me. Everything you're getting, little ho, is because of me. With how successful Nicki's career had been, it's not a stretch to think record labels viewed her as the blueprint to producing the next megastar in female rap. Plus, when yeah. you consider that UK rapper Lady Lesher stated that Atlantic Records offered her a 250,000 euro deal if she made a diss track about Minaj. You start to wonder if Atlantic Records, the same label that signed Cardi B, may have encouraged her to imitate and potentially engage in beef with Nicki because mm. Cardi seemingly responded to Nicki on stage. You know At the time, it wouldn't really make sense for Cardi B to be enemies with this nigga looking at her like that. This, this nigga, this nigga don't only like what he see. He loves what he see, nigga. He sees his future in her, bro. <laughs> hey, and she fine, but this nigga is lost. Yo, get this nigga a map. <laughs> With Nicki Minaj, yeah. <laughs> but from a business and marketing perspective, I could see a label encouraging this beef to keep fans engaged and boost sales numbers. In fact, Cardi's Barty Gang and Nicki's Barb's fan bases actively fought each other on social media. Oh the Barb's even teamed up with the Swifties to excessively stream Taylor's Look What You Made Me Do in an attempt to keep Taylor at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. But they ultimately failed as Bodak oh. Yellow landed at the number one spot, breaking a record that Nicki could- Bodak Yellow was fine. Oh, look, I, I don't even know like why, I don't even know what the, the Swift, I don't want to get in this, bro. I don't want to. I should just shut up. I'm just shut up. I don't. I don't know anything. I, I'm gonna just Cardi shut B up. Became I'm the just, first yeah. female rapper. It's with better if I don't get. I, I don't want any problem with the Swifties or the Barb's, bro. Bodak Yellow oh my at number one on the Hot 100. The Razor Barb. Yeah, I'm good on that one. At this point, Nicki had beef. never achieved a number one song. Plus, she was 35 and her prime was seemingly behind her. Cardi's commercial impact could not be denied, and perhaps Nicki wanted to establish a truce. She congratulated Cardi on the massive achievement on Twitter, but that truce only lasted a few weeks because Nikki's jealousy would eat away at her. In October of 2017, the Migos released a single titled Motorsport, in which they requested a feature from Nikki. In Nikki's verse, she said, If Cardi is the QB, then I'm Nick Lombardi. To explain the reference, an NFL quarterback, like Patrick Mahomes, is typically the star of the team. But mm -hmm. Vince Lombardi is one of the greatest NFL coaches of all time. He was an executive of the NFL, and the trophy that is given to the Super Bowl winner is called the Lombardi Trophy. Nikki's essentially saying here, if Cardi's the star of a team, then I'm a legend. 
I'm the damn trophy that you work your whole life to achieve. <laughs> However, once Nikki found out that Cardi was going to be on the song, she changed the lyric to, if Quavo is the QB, then I'm Nick Lombardi, which doesn't really make sense, nor does it rhyme. Despite this, Cardi insisted that there was no beef between the two. I just feel like it's really internet made up. Fans and people, they really want to see that happen because it's really entertaining. To see people beef is entertaining. But the beef yeah. would be confirmed. Drama is way better than, you know, peace. Physical altercation a few months and later. Until sparks at Harper's Bazaar's Icons party during New York Fashion Week, multiple videos of the two fighting quickly circulated online, with one even showing Cardi attempting to throw a shoe at Nikki. In one <laughs> of the videos, Cardi can be heard making some damning threats. <laughs> Cardi was later seen exiting the venue with a massive bump on her forehead. Nikki said she was embarrassed about the whole situation. The other night, I was a part of something oh, so why I sound like mortifying that. and so humiliating. Oh. And Cardi responded with, How you say that I was the, the wild animal, that I attacked you, that you was mortified, that you was humiliated, playing the victim, but now you're the gangster. You need to pick a side. Do you want to be the victim or do you want to be the gangster? You lie so much, you can't even keep up with your lies. Cardi posted oh, her reasoning man. behind the attack the following day. She accused Nikki of trying to blackball her, intimidate her, and worst of all, speaking ill of her child. Everyone took Cardi's side since That's they bad, understood bro. that defending their children. Hey, careers end off that shit, boy. Careers dead ass end. You remember that shit that Fredo did to Agent over his daughter? but it wasn't even true and then fredo got clapped hey nigga careers in off them kids boy hey in all kinds of ways you, you know the other nigga four four five you hey her careers get clapped real easy don't, don't fuck around people kids gang leave people kids alone in all fashions and all daughter. forwards she also called out <laughs> cardi's hypocrisy by revealing old instagram screenshots where cardi repeatedly attacked a mother whose son died she also referred to the deceased child as a monkey cardi also accused <laughs> nikki of trying to interrupt or ruin her financial opportunities money, money that, that would help her feed her family so nikki again called out cardi's hypocrisy now we gonna get into some things because i'm tired of people lying on me now you want to talk about stopping bags but it's two innocent girls in a strip club right now that ain't mm. did nothing but go to the strip club and get money now uh -huh. they can't get no money so who's stopping bags oh because you got grown-ass men showing up to where the f they at and where they work at oh they can't feed their kids they can't feed their fucking family you mad at a woman for what a man is doing and that's the problem with so many black women and women wait period. what oh because she's not black because she refers to you black women oh we got the receipts for that too fyi she refers to black women as monkeys and roaches <gasps> roaches Cardi never responded to this directly. She was done with the back and forth and made a declaration that Nikki did not want to accept. We could settle it however you want to settle it. We could talk about it or we could fight it out. I'm with whatever. Regardless of who you think was right in this situation, it was evident that female rappers had no intentions on bowing down and declaring Nikki as the queen of rap. Her dominance over the culture was fading. Cardi was just the first of many emerging female artists that we see uh, dominating hip hop Meg today. And it eyes. Seemed to slowly <laughs> her mind, seemingly grasping at straws to keep the public on her side. But the more she got on social media to rant, the worse it got for her. On August 10th, that, that fucking Meek Mill, you gotta, you gotta let that shit go. Let somebody else run your fucking page. Stop. See, see. You see, it, it, they, they, they have match made in fucking heaven. They both say this. They say they both. Get on Twitter and crash the fuck out. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it never fucking fails. Why not just give your Twitter to a tech savvy kid, bro? Like, you don't even got to be a kid. Like, give, give it to tw a 20 year old. Give it to a 19 year old and tell them don't fuck up. And they won't fuck up because they don't want the internet on their head. You feel me? You know, ah, man. Just, 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 just stop tweeting. Stop fucking crashing out. Stop hopping on Twitter and saying bullshit. It's, it's just gets you in a deeper hole. <laughs> 2018, Nikki released her fourth studio album, Queen. Led by singles like Chun Li and Barbie Dreams, the album received positive reviews from critics. Queen debuted at number two on the Billboard Hot 200 after selling 185,000 units first week. Now, this was Nikki's worst album performance, but number two is still considered a wildly successful debut. Yeah. She just released at a competitive time. Travis Scott's yeah. Astro World dropped the week before, which yeah. was the single most anticipated album of 2018. Yeah. And he delivered as a was a great project. Astro World remained at number one for a second week in a row. Jeez. With 200 wasn't Antidote? If that's the, the album where Antidote was on, fresh, 
Cardi fans had even more ammo since her debut album reached number one just a few months earlier. On top of that, Cardi outsold Nicki. Nicki being number two was further proof to her detractors that she is not the dominant force she once was, so she started blaming everyone but herself for the album not reaching number one. She tweeted, Spotify put Drake's face on every playlist but told me they'd have to teach me a lesson for playing my music 10 minutes early on Queen Radio. Even though they've been giving away my music for free for years and I'm one of the top Spotify artists of all time. Nicki mm. also blamed her label for not standing up for her because they feared Spotify would retaliate and not promote her friend and frequent collaborator Ariana Grande's album Sweetener that released okay. around the same time. Spotify eventually addressed Nicki's claims, denying all allegations of mistreatment. Spotify supported Nicki Minaj with a Times Square billboard, a host of the largest playlists, New Music Friday, and the New Music Release Shelf. A representative for Spotify told Business Insider, her song Bed actually saw an yeah, increase bro. based on the promotions put behind the campaign. Man, the company bro. continues to be big fans of Nicki. We gotta let that pride die. We have to. We have to. We gotta let that pride die. When you see somebody win, bro, just just, just suck it up. Just suck it up. Honestly, bro. It, 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 you gotta let that fucking pride die, bro. It's gonna be your turn. You just gotta be patient. You just gotta stay, put your nose to that fucking grindstone and stay patient. Stop worrying about what your neighbor got. What? Stop worrying about what your other person got. Especially if they your homie, bro. Leave that, yo, bro. I hate it when I see that shit. When people get very envious of their homies, bro. If that's your brother, blood brother too, like, bro, chill the fuck out and stay patient. Your turn is coming. Just do what you gotta do. Stay focused. Work on your craft. Work harder, and eventually your ass will be number one. You feel me? Like, like, bro. J. Cole was spitting when he said, people act like two legends cannot coexist, and sometimes they be the legends, and they don't be letting themselves coexist with other legends. And it just it, it eats me up, too. I ain't gonna lie. That shit be pissing me After off. After Spotify proved her wrong, Nikki could no longer blame them, so she shifted her anger towards Travis himself. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in writing a dope album only for Travis Scott to have Kylie Jenner post a tour pass telling people to come see her and Stormy. I'm actually laughing. For context, Kylie Jenner promoted Travis Scott's online store to Instagram with the caption, Me and Storm ready for tour, to which Nikki claims that Travis sold 50,000 album units because of Kylie's promotion. All purchases of his t-shirts, hoodies, hats, and keychains automatically came with a digital download of Astroworld, which counted as mm. one album sale, even though the buyer is not required to actually download or listen to the album. This That's, has been a common oh. strategy for artists to exploit the Billboard charts for over a decade. But what we're not going to oh. do is have this auto tune man coming up here selling auto tune man and telling y'all he sold half a million fucking albums because he didn't. And it's a lot of rappers behind the scene that want to talk about it and they're scared. You're a fucking man. You got your. Nah, what the fuck? That's a crazy insult. Why'd she call Travis Scott auto-tune man? What the fuck? <laughs> that shit is hilarious. Homeboy talking for you. Yeah. You got your girlfriend posting tour passes saying you sold albums stop it firstly nikki calling travis autotune man <laughs> an insult considering her love for the effect right. secondly her being angry about bundle sales is ironic because she tried to do this exact same strategy according to an article published by rolling stone on her online store nikki had an array of merch and album bundles available she also provided a concert package to her upcoming joint tour with rapper future each time a fan purchased a concert package they received free copies of her album which substantially impacted the sales for Queen. Wow. Also tried to boost her numbers after the album's official release by adding her previous release track Fifi to the album which would count towards the album's total streaming numbers. But none of it worked. Nikki had no one else to blame. She had to just accept that people didn't want her album, her merch, or her tour as much as they wanted Travis's or Cardi B's. As if 2018 couldn't get any crazier for Nikki, the public found out about her boyfriend's dark past, which oh changed God. her reputation forever. Man. Nikki began to publicly post about her boyfriend Kenneth Petty after if a few months of past, dating, though, sources close to Minaj claiming that they were man, already considered getting married that, and having babies, yeah, that's none of my Nikki's business. fans weren't so supportive of Kenneth as he is a convicted sex offender stemming back 
to the 90s. Kenneth and Damn. Ethan pleaded not guilty to all charges. However, during a hearing on April 5th, 1995, Petty withdrew his not guilty plea and instead pleaded guilty to the charge of attempted rape. He was sentenced okay. to 18 to 54 months in prison, but served nearly four years before his release in January of 1999. If Kenneth is considered a tier two or tier Damn. two, Damn! on the sex offender registry for at least 20 years, as well as report his current address to the Department of Justice every six months. Which is Yo. why in July of 2022, Petty was sentenced in Los Angeles to probation and home detention for failing to register as a sex offender. Oh Kenneth was also God. ordered to pay a $55,000 This fund. is what I'm be talking about though, Patrick. Can we just have a wholesome video? Why we gotta, why we gotta do this shit? Why I gotta look, why I gotta... <laughs> How we go from... From Nicki Minaj and young Remy Remy Ma to to this shit, how how we get her? How we how we how we eighteen minutes in and we getting her now? How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> Yo, bro. as a part of his sentence of three years probation and one year of home detention, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. But it gets even worse. Since the public became so invested in Nikki's relationship, media outlets began reporting on the 26-year-old trial, which led to Petty's victim, Jennifer Hugh, having to relive this horrific time of her life. She even claimed that the associates of Minaj and Petty spent months in 2020 harassing her and offered her hundreds of thousands of dollars to basically say that the attempted rape never happened. Oh Jennifer God, alleged bro. that a man named Barry, who was close to her brother, reached out to offer his help. Barry got Jennifer on the phone with Minaj, to which she claims that Minaj tried to help her. She also quoted Nikki saying, Listen, I just need you to know, woman to woman, this really happened. Jennifer was confused. Why would Nicki Minaj want to help her husband's victim? Well, if Jennifer were to say that the 1995 case was a I lie, mean... then Nicki's reputation to the public might be saved. Barry allegedly parked in a car outside her house. Jennifer said he offered her $20,000 in cash if she agreed to sign a letter he typed that stated she lied about her assault. Jennifer refused any and all offers of financial compensation to change her story. Jennifer became even more fearful when she received received a call from her brother asking if she was okay. He told her that their cousin had called him again, and that this time he sounded terrified, telling them that they knew where she lived. Right. Jennifer moved and changed her phone number as she feared for her safety. She did not know who was looking for her, but she did not want to take any chances. She ended up moving three times over the course of a couple years. She believes that she was being intimidated, stalked. Also, she could change her story and clear Petty's name to the public, but she stayed strong and refused to give in. She actually ended up suing Man, the Petties bro. for $20 million for her claims she endured a relentless campaign of bribery, intimidation, harassment, and stalking. But then Petty accused Hugh of going out of her way to publicly shame him. Jennifer even went as far as releasing never-before-seen photos from 1994 with bruises on her neck and body after the assault. Jennifer said, When I was 16, nobody believed me, and now it feels the same. It feels like I'm fighting for my character. Petty and Minaj's legal teams denied all accusations and are more than ready to defend themselves in court. Since Minaj hasn't directly responded to these allegations, it's impossible to say she is guilty of bribery and intimidation. Not responding is probably the smartest thing Nikki has ever done. But even if the truth comes out that she never intimidated this woman, fans still wonder why out of all people Nikki chose to be with, she landed on Kenneth Petty. After all, this wasn't his only crime. Petty was also responsible for the shooting death of Lamont Robinson in 2002. The original charge was murder Yo, in a Patrick, man, what are you doing? Why are you stepping my feet with your paws? Patrick, can we... Can we, uh... Can we just... Can you make the next, uh... video about Spongebob and how, like, how cheerful and joyful it is? Because I'm tired of hearing about predators and, and murders. I... I... Honestly, I I really I really just want a wholesome video. <laughs> I don't know if that's so much to ask. I I just I don't want to hear about this stuff anymore, Patrick. I like your videos, but god damn it. <laughs> Man. I agree, but following a plea bargain, he pled guilty to manslaughter, to which he was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison for. TV host Jesse Palmer aired a segment on Daily Mail TV regarding Nicki's relationship where he said that Nicki's fans were, quote, worried because this isn't the first time Nicki Minaj has defended a sex offender. He then clarified that Nicki had allegedly been supporting her brother while he was behind bars. Nicki proceeded to have an outburst on Instagram, saying, you just lied on me on national television and now you're being sued. You better be able to back up what you just said about me with facts. 
She followed up with another tweet saying that the reporter was going to jail for repeating extremely public information. Nikki would have 100% lost this lawsuit since it was public knowledge that Nikki was supporting her brother during his trial. Because if you don't know, Nikki's husband isn't the only one guilty of sex crimes. Her brother Jelani Mirage was sentenced to 25 yeah, years to life bro. in prison for predatory sexual assault against a child. Authorities arrested Jelani in connection with the case in December of 2015 after he was accused of repeatedly R-wording his stepdaughter. What the f- Again, why are you saying R-word now? You already said the word earlier. One, that's, a, that's one thing. Two, bro, how, yo, how we go from, how we go, how we, how we go from Remy Ma to this? Patrick, please, spare me, bro. Spare me. Why we, I don't want to know, but can we just make the next one about rainbows and sunshine, please? <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want this knowledge. This is knowledge I didn't want to know. I, I, I really would have loved to stay negligent about this. Uh, I gotta start clicking on videos. <laughs> when she was yeah, just so I just gotta start old. clicking on shit. According That's to gossip, is. Jelani was an employee for Nikki at the time. While in custody, he suffered from an unknown medical condition that required him to be arranged at Nassau University Medical Center. According to the New York Post, Nikki Minaj promptly paid her brother's $100,000 bail, using two of her houses in Baldwin, Long Island as collateral. According to a source close to Nikki, she was prepared to do anything for her brother. Nikki was willing to give up any asset to ensure she had enough money to protect her brother. A grand jury in New York's Nassau County indicted Jelani Mirage on felony sexual assault against a child in April of 2016. He was also indicted on two felony counts of sexual conduct against a child and endangering the welfare of a child. He pled not guilty to the charges, asserting his innocence and denying the charges brought against him. Since he pled not guilty, Jelani seeked to have the prosecution prove the case against him beyond a reasonable doubt during the trial in October of 2017. Although Nikki never commented publicly on the charges against Jelani, his attorney, David Schwartz, told media outlets that Nikki may attend part of her brother's trial and supports him 100%. In November of 2017, Nassau County Court found Jelani Mirage guilty of predatory sexual assault. And you might as well just add rapper Takashi69 to the Nicki Minaj sex crime triangle as her first number one song came from their collaboration, Trolls. In October uh. of 2015, Daniel Hernandez pled guilty to a felony count of use of a child in a sexual performance. He was charged with three counts of the offense after a February 2015 incident I did not know in which about he had physical either. contact with a 13-year-old girl and later distributed videos of the incident online as a part of a music video. In the video, the child engages in oral sexual intercourse with the separately charged defendant, Taquan Anderson, while the defendant, Daniel Hernandez, stands behind the child making a thrusting motion with his pelvis and smacking her on the buttocks. The child is nude in the video. In an interview with DJ Academics, 6 9 denied knowing the girl was a minor. But Takashi's legal situation was very much public knowledge before Nikki and 6 ix first collaboration. Most artists in the industry avoided working with Takashi due to this charge, but Nikki didn't seem to mind. Some people, particularly Nicki Minaj fans, look at her involvement with sexual predators as strictly coincidental. Her brother could have lived a double life. She probably genuinely thought he was a good, innocent man and was just as shocked as we were when the charges were made. They probably think she financially supported him because she is a good sister. Her husband's case was in 1995 before she ever knew him, and he was 16 years old. Maybe Nikki believes he is a changed I was going to say that. I was going to say that all that shit happened in his past, but it's still like he did do it, you know? I don't think they're up late in bed talking about that shit, though, so she probably had no idea, but she also could have, so... Like I said earlier, when it first got brought up, it's none of my fucking business. I don't know. <laughs> and their love is so strong, she's willing know. to forgive him. Or maybe she genuinely believes he was falsely accused and vilified his whole life. And 6 9 could be chalked up as purely business. 6 9 is a rapper, and let's be honest, most rappers aren't exactly the most morally righteous people. Oh. But she still has this massive <laughs> right. gray cloud of questionable associations that makes it really hard for fans to defend her. Especially when she keeps engaging in wars with other female rappers. 
years. In addition to Remy and Cardi, Lotto and Megan Thee Stallion broke Nicki down, but we can't even blame them. You will notice that Minaj did this to herself. Nicki and Atlanta-based rapper Lotto got into some beef after Minaj exposed screenshots of their private conversation. It all started when Minaj was Man, mad at the doing that too? for nominating her song oh, why, Super why is that a Girl big thing in the pop category to while Lotto's hit song Big Energy was nominated in the rap category. That makes me high-key scared the text niggas. It's like, bro, cornball shit. That's some, that's some cornball shit. That's some cornball shit. It's called a direct message for a reason. Because if I was to say out 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 loud, hey bro, let's collab versus in a DM, but then you flip that post a DM and say, huh, look at this nigga. I'm gonna be like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? You know, and that that that's a real big reason why I don't collab with certain niggas. Like, bro, I don't even want to ask niggas sometimes. Cause niggas, niggas, niggas is spicy and slimy nowadays. And I ain't gonna lie. Super freaky girl where I only rapped on the song was removed out of rap categories at the Grammys, right? And put in pop. Now, Nikki does have a solid point here. The Grammys categorizations for these songs does seem wrong, and people have suspected that the Grammys have been corrupt for a long time. Lotto responded with a subtweet saying, damn, I can't win for losing. All these awards, nominations, I can't even celebrate. According to Lotto, she attempted to reach out to Nikki and privately address the situation, but Nikki went to Twitter instead. This Karen has probably mentioned my name in over 100 interviews. She said she waited in line for Pink Friday with her Barbie chain on bangs, pink hair, but today, Scratch Off decides to be silent, rather than speak up for the black woman she called her biggest inspiration. The two then continued their back and forth on Twitter. Lotto said, Super freaky grandma is married and related <laughs> to effing rapists. You ain't gonna bully me, bitch. My idol turned rival, now you hating. As you can see, anytime Nikki gets into a beef, the main attack is her association with her brother and husband. Nikki responded by pointing out Lotto's hypocrisy. Didn't care about when she was begging for features, didn't care about Kodak's past, didn't care about the accusations made about Dr. Luke who produced Big Energy. Newsflash, scratch off. I've never raped anyone. I've inspired millions. You're one of them, bozo. To be clear, Lotto never accused Nikki of R-wording anyone. She said married and related. The public took Lotto's side and looked at Nikki as a bitter old bully mad at the young rising star who won the BET award for best female hip hop artist over Nikki. But Nikki's beef with Lotto is minor compared to how she embarrassed herself trying to attack Megan the Stallion. Megan was the one female rapper that Nicki didn't immediately make enemies with. After connecting on Instagram Live, the two collaborated on Megan's single, Hot Girl Summer, in 2019, which became a huge hit. They even shot a music video together and seemed to be on friendly terms for the short years that followed. But in 2021, Minaj unfollowed Megan on Instagram, sparking rumors that their friendship was heading south. On an episode of her Queen radio show the following year, Minaj recalled an encounter between them that shifted the status of their friendship. Bro, Nikki what? Said, Imagine telling someone you didn't want to drink because you were, at the time, possibly pregnant, because you were actively trying to have a baby. In typical Nikki fashion, she doesn't mention anyone's name, but fans suspected it was about Megan. A fan tweeted at Megan, Nicki Minaj is accusing you of encouraging abortion and child endangerment with alcohol. This isn't something to stay quiet on. And Megan said, lie. Months later, Minaj took subtle digs at Meg on the track Red Ruby to Sleaze, rapping 700... I what's up with these sneak disses at? Hmm, so stupid. This is so stupid. Why? Why? You know what? Drama is king, bro. Drama is content. Drama is, drama is king. Drama is content, and content is king. It will do anything for clout. That's that's what I'm seeing here, bro. 100 on them horses when we fixing to leave. But Why even say it? Why, bro? Reeves. Like, that doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. Stallion. Is a horse. Megan ignored her shots for years until her 2024 song, Hiss, which is an all encompassing diss track where she takes shots at multiple people in the industry, including Minaj by way of her husband's status as a registered sex offender. Megan raps, on, These hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's Law. Megan's Law is the name for a federal law in the United States requiring law enforcement authorities to make information available to the public regarding registered sex offenders. This one lyric sent Nikki in to one of the worst meltdowns we've seen on social media by a celebrity. I don't care, bitch. I dare you. 
I fucking dare you, bitch, to say one more thing about my fucking family, ho. Bullet fragment foot, bitch. Bullet fragment, bullet fragment, bitch. She a bullet fragment, bullet fragment, bitch. Now listen here, ho. Oh my God, you dropping this reaction on YouTube? I always do. Not, I, I've been, I've been lazy with it, but I've actually been making a lot of content on my other channel, so. Yeah, but. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Take take Meek Phil, take take Meek Mill phone and take Nicki Minaj phone when they in a beef, bruh. Cause what the fuck? Why is you why is you making fun of her getting shot in the foot? If allegedly, why is you making fun of her allegedly getting shot in the foot? What the fuck? Y'all just gotta shut the fuck up sometimes. Honestly, bro, no, I, I don't want anybody. I don't want the Barb's after me. I don't want any Megan Thee Stallion fans after me. I have I have a lot of people. I have. Of people that have bars in my circle, I have a lot of Mega Stallion, Megan Thee Stallion fans in my circle, so I don't want no beef with nobody. I, I wave the right white flag. Leave me the fuck alone. But, bro, what is up with these sneak disses? Leave people, mind your fucking business, just make good music, and nobody will give a damn. I, get up on your good foot. Bitch, I said get up on your good foot, not your bad foot. Like, what's that? A diss or a piss? Said it was his, I said piss. That my fans called it piss. Nikki is maniacally mocking the incident where Megan was shot in the foot by Tory Lanez. She then goes on to refer to her husband's rape as 30 year old T. Y'all mad because y'all don't have tea. somebody that loves you and stand 10 toes down behind you. So you bringing up 30 year old T from when this child, when this man was a 15 year old person, child. You bringing up 30 year old T because no man has ever and will ever love you and lying on your dead mother on oh, your dead mama i on your dead you know lied on a dead mama lied on a dead mama lied on a dead mama lied on your i said lied on a one thing i can say about nikki bro is she's fucking hilarious when she called when she called travis scott auto-tune man that shit sent me <laughs> one thing i can say about nikki bro she's a fucking comedian <laughs> I don't, yo, she might be wrong half the fucking time, but she's a fucking comedian. Every time she's a goddamn comedian. <laughs> I don't tell you, man, it's, it's the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Look at rage! Look at rage! <laughs> Nikki, aged 41 years old, repeatedly mocks Megan's mother who died of brain cancer while claiming that this is her alter ego, Roman, speaking. Every one of y'all, bloggers, YouTubers, all of y'all, let me tell y'all something. What my pen don't catch, oh. the universe will. Oh. Okay. Ask about my prophecies. She didn't drag Megan. She embarrassed that. herself. This is literally the same feeling as when you have to sit next to a crackhead <laughs> on a bus. This is what narcissistic rage looks like. Nikki then took to Twitter to continue expressing her rage. Megan's Law. For a free beat, you could hit Megan Raw. Minaj also did what she does best and bragged about her success, listing mm. several accolades while comparing their respective careers. She even accused Megan of winning fraudulent, fraudulent awards, awards. Seemingly referring to That's the same shit that I be I be I be saying on Valorant and niggas be saying empty frags. What the fuck does that even mean, bro? What the fuck does that even mean? Fraudulent awards, empty frags, like how 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 do you get an achievement and it doesn't matter? Like what what White flag. I her three Grammys, of which Minaj has none, and repeatedly described her as a flop who uses ghostwriters. In the midst of the outburst, TMZ reported that several barbs leaked the location of the burial site of Megan's mother on social media. As a result, the cemetery notified local authorities and increased the number of security personnel at their facility. She spent days berating Megan on social media, during which she repeatedly no, mentioned crazy. her mother. Nikki also liked no, hundreds crazy. of tweets from fans leaking somebody's dead Megan, mother's grave. Megan, is mocked her for the nuts. shooting. Nikki ultimately released a diss track it's titled nuts. Bigfoot, no. where she taunts Megan over her deceased mother, her appearance, and her sexual history, including that's her relationship crazy. with ex-boyfriend Partisan Fontaine. I'm not gonna lie. Two minutes of that's the reason I diss somebody. I ain't gonna lie, bro. If Megan would have dissed her after disrespecting him, my mom. If my mom, <laughs> yo, if my mom dies and you diss my mom, I'm, I, I. <laughs> 
you're gonna get a disc for sure and you're gonna get a little more, more than a disc i'm not gonna lie to you but this song is a <laughs> EP monologue i'm not gonna insane. lie to you bro you don't have to see me we're gonna have to run the hands you can't just say some shit like that and get away with it i'm not gonna lie Megan laughing herself to sleep with this. The producers really saw her having a manic episode and hit record. Nikki, girl, they only asked you to stop covering up predators. Megan has yet to respond to Nikki's diss track. She seems to be unbothered while she continues to promote Hiss. Hiss was met with widespread critical acclaim and debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, making it her third number one single as an artist. Nah, that's, that's, Due that's, to the negative that's, attention that's placed on Nikki following her heated rivalry with Megan, fans began digging into her past and found a questionable old song. The 2009 Lil Twist track, Old Enough, featuring Nicki Minaj, was released when Lil Twist was 16 <laughs> nah, years old. Nicki raps, You might can get it, you might can hit it, but I gotta run. I know you young, but you know I like that young money. See, little boy, I can be your little teacher. And if you ball, then meet me behind the bleachers. You gotta come, come hard trying to reach her. Cause if we hit it, I might charge you for the feature. While someone can argue that it's just music, a creative outlet to innocently roleplay various situations, it's just another bullet point on the long list of Nicki's associations with sex crimes. And again, there is no debating that Nicki Minaj fundamentally changed the landscape for female. Oh, but all that. Forever. She is oh, no. a hip hop legend. Oh, but all that. All of this has put a damaging stain on her reputation, and I'm not really sure how she can get back in the good graces of fans. Shout out to shout out to Patrick CC uh, for making another good video. Patrick, Patrick, if you ever see this reaction, I just want to ask you a fucking question. Can you please do something wholesome in your next video? The last video you were talking about murders. The last video before that one you're talking about predators. In this video you talked about murders, predators, and and child. Like, can you can we chill, nigga? Can we chill? Can you chill? Like. <laughs> Can you chill, bro? I just want to watch a good informational YouTube video that's a good video that doesn't have to do with all of this bullshit. <laughs> Honestly, I want to stay far away from it. Other than that, though, Patrick CC, W video. I can't wait to see the next one, regardless of how crazy it might just get.